Welcome back to our alumni speaker series. Joining us today is the one and the only Gina Tranquata, who had a very successful career with the Manitoba Bisons during track and field and cross country back in the day, and is still a legend of athletics to this day, doing lots of different things and making us young people, you know, be inspired and want to keep up with all the tremendous achievement and success that you have found in your career post Bisons. So Gina, thank you for joining me on this episode. Thank you for having me. So we were chatting a little bit before recording about some of the different things that you are still involved in and some of the competitions that you are training for. So you had recently trained for or were, are training for a competition coming up soon and another one that's on the horizon. Talk a little bit about the preparation that goes into training for competitions while having a family and while balancing probably more things than you had to deal with when you were a student athlete. Oh, sure. So I'll, I'll just start off with by explaining what I'm training for right now. Uh, so I just competed in the North and Central American and the Caribbean 50 key trail championship in swift current. So this was actually the first championship of that nature that's ever unfolded. So I was pretty excited to represent a team of four women from Canada for that. Um, the next race that I'm training for is a 50 K and it's on the road and it's world championships in India. So pretty high level of international competition of which I'm so thrilled to be able to be a part of, uh, you know, I'm 38 year old mom. I work full time. I work two jobs. We live on an acreage. I've got a traveling husband, like you name it, it's happening in our life right now. And, you know, as I reflect back uh, over like the last 15, 20 years, I really see how, you know, my university studies and being part of a Bison athlete has really shaped uh, the way that I handle my life and definitely can attribute to the, those values of organizing, managing your time, um, making wise decisions around your health and how that's shaped to where I've been able to take myself in the sport. So one of the things that I didn't want to touch on in particular was that you had played for the Bisons and you were there for, you said uh, five or six years, correct? That's right. So what made you decide that you wanted to keep up with doing competitions and athletics, even after you had completed your university degree? Sure. Well, I, I feel like I really started my running career in university as, as odd as that might seem. Like, sure, I ran in elementary and junior high and high school, but I feel like experiencing that level of competition and the atmosphere of training just totally started this drive in me that I just loved running. And I continued through starting my career as an occupational therapist um, it took me through, you know, the roller coasters of life, having kids. And it wasn't until after I had my kids that I received a lot of comments of, oh, you know, I don't know if you'll be able to run as fast as you could before having kids, or it's a lot harder with your working, you know, and balancing family life. And I just felt like there's such a strong kind of stereotype out there that the older you get, the slower you get. And the more you have in the life, the least likely you are to succeed in, in your sport or the thing that you're, you're good at. And so for me, being able to make these teams and, and do it together as a family was a huge personal victory for me in saying, you know what, don't settle for those norms. Don't let others dictate your success and where you can take yourself. So what I'm hearing is that it's all you needed. All, all you needed to hear was people say that you can't do these things when you become a mom and you have a family and you, and, and it became personal with you. <laughs> That's true. And, and you know what, I've had friends um, kind of share the same experiences that they, you know, that there is some self doubt as to whether they would be able to return to, you know, uh, a successful or competitive athlete after having a family. And yeah, so that, that definitely was a driver for me. So what are some of the things that you've learned about yourself in the fact that you have still been able to keep up athletically, physically, and have a family and a job and do everything else on top of that? Uh, 
Well, I've definitely learned how to stay um, uh, as a balanced person and supportive in the roles that's required of me on a day-to-day -day basis. So for me, running is not only my personal goal and personal time to myself to see how far I can go, but it's also a way of keeping me balanced in debriefing on, on my work day in, you know, in a weird way, building up the energy to support my kids in the evening and, uh, and to stay a level minded wife who can support their husband as well in his own goals. Uh, so for me, you know, running kind of is, is that link that, that I feel makes me a better person in, in my overall life. This is something that I have heard a lot around parents who are involved in any level of fitness, especially at a high level. Would you say that after having kids that your motivation or purpose or drive to perform athletically has actually increased as compared to it taking a backseat to, to taking care of your kids because of the fact that you can be an inspiration and you can be a role model and it can give you more energy to do, to be an even better mom than, than without doing it. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. And, and I feel that that's, <laughs> that that is needed to to do it after having kids and and as you get older because it is sure a lot harder and takes way more organization and you really just have to have that drive to to keep going so yeah I would I would agree with that for sure were there any people that came before you who you would say you looked up to or were inspired by that do something that's similar to what you're involved in now you know, uh, two people kind of stand out. One is more on a personal level, which was my dad. And he was actually someone who got into his running later. And, you know, we did the Manitoba Marathon Father's Day together. Um, so just seeing how he prioritized his fitness. Um, as, you know, my, my mom was very healthy as well. But just to see how that translated into an overall health and well-being in their lives. Um, and then secondly would be my current coach and uh, Olympian Krista Duchesne, because she herself is a, a dietitian. She has a career. She has three kids. Uh, she reached her competitive career after having kids. So, you know, I see how she was successful in managing um, all those aspects of her life. So, you know, that to me, that gave hope in knowing that, you know, that's possible for others as well as myself. So when you reflect back now on the time that you spent at the University of Manitoba, could you have ever envisioned that you would have the life that you have now looking back on the days that you were a student athlete at U of M? Oh, you know what? I, I wouldn't have believed you if you would have told me that I'd not, you know, back in the day, cross country was, I think, 5K distance. And I never would think I'd be running and competing for Canada at 10 times the distance. I would have probably thought you were crazy. Uh, so, you know, it's really amazing where life can take you. And um, and it really goes to show that you shouldn't set your bar low. That I couldn't agree more with, with the last part you mentioned there about not setting the bar high and trying to shoot for the moon. Because even, even if you miss, you land amongst the stars. And even just mentioning that little principle of how you went from, eh, you're running 5K and that seems pretty cool, but... Now you're running literally 10x that amount. And I've heard about this principle in, in the world of, of business and about uh, people talk about 10x, 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 but that 10x is actually easier than 2x. That this idea of aiming for transforming your life is actually less difficult than just trying to keep, keep working hard and put your nose to the grindstone. Would you agree with, this based on your experience or how do you reflect on 10 xing your achievements and the things that you've done in your life from the time that you were playing that you were with the bisons yeah so uh you know i guess my perspective on that is that it was a gradual progression to this distance where i kind of experienced experimented with a little bit more a little bit more can i handle it with work with job with marriage with now being pregnant and just gradually getting myself up to to this distance and it's interesting because this is probably my most favorite distance to run is 50k <laughs> 
So go figure. <laughs> when you were a part of the Bisons, who are some of the people that helped to form you into the student athlete that you became the most? You know what? Uh, it, it's a combination of, of people and the teamwork across the teams that I participated in. Uh, so head coach Claude Berube led a very supportive and positive group where, you know, you left a practice or a race feeling good about yourself, um, knowing what you can work on to be better. And a lot of those friendships that I developed during running are still standing, probably my closest friends and uh, have definitely helped shape me into the person of who I am today. When you were, before you actually got to the Bisons, what were some of your initial thoughts and feelings on being a student athlete in university? You know, I, I was nervous as probably many are in terms of knowing how that balance might be of, you know, not only studying university and, and jumping into that for the first couple of years and figuring out how that's different than high school, uh, but also managing placements, you know, part-time work to pay for those textbooks um, and then adding in uh, an athletic kind of endeavor. So, um, yeah, it's, I guess I encourage others to just, you know, evaluate where their passions are and what their goals might be and, and to structure their day to day in a way to make it possible because it is, uh, you might have to reprioritize how you spend your time and, and, you know, maybe take things a bit more seriously. Uh, but I, I definitely say that it's worth all the effort and work. What's some of the wisest advice that you received through your athletic career, whether it be with the university of Manitoba and, or potentially afterwards. Um, well, I'm sure that there's there's definitely been lots of advice that, <laughs> that comes over the years, but one that just strikes me right now is something that our coach Claude Verube would say, and his advice before running would be to keep it simple, stupid, <laughs> meaning you know don't overthink it, you know, and and just rely on your experiences, your gut instinct in how you approach a race. Um, but I think that extends to to life itself as well as to try not to overcomplicate things, do things that bring you joy, and um, and you know structure your life in a way that can let you achieve that. What achievement are you most proud of through the time that you spent at the University of Manitoba, and also in the time that you've spent after? Uh, during university in terms of athletic, um, the athletic domain would be making the traveling teams and hitting standards. I was a walk on to the team. Um, so to me, that was, that was a huge accomplishment, uh, through my university studies, it was managing all life practicums, um, and achieving my undergrad in athletic therapy and then certifying, and then going on to complete my master's, which has brought me into the career that I have right now, which, which I love. Um, sorry, can you repeat the second part of your question? It in the, so, and then post university career, what is the achievement that you're most proud of? Uh, you know what? It would be my family. Uh, I actually met my husband in university through track running. So that actually did bring me my, my greatest accomplishment. Um, but when I break it down, you know, running is important. It's a great part of, of our life and day to day, but it's really my family. Like at the end of the race is the first thing I think about is wanting to give them a hug or I'm listening for them cheering for me. So I really hope that I can be a role model to my kids and that they learn to go after the things that they love. You know, you might not always make it to the, the spot that you would like to, but the journey along the way is so rewarding and, and shapes you into who you are. I love that. That's it, it's it's the person who who you become, not the destination that you reach. Is mm -hmm. that's the thing that really is what you're going to look back on and and remember the most. Mm -hmm. And what what would you say is the next thing that you look forward to most on the horizon in terms of a major goal that you want to achieve or an event you want to participate in in the next, let's say, I don't know, a few years. Uh, well, to me, that would be competing in the world 50K in India in November. Like since I 
progressed into the 50 K distance. And I found that this, you know, this is the one that I like. Um, my goal was let's make team Canada and let's compete at the highest level and represent our country. And so for me going into November, like there's so much excitement and good nervousness coming into that, that I feel like my cup, my cup will be full. I, I would really love a good race where those things out of your control, just, you know, go in your favor. Um, so for me, that's a big goal. And then being able to step, step back after that and, and reevaluate what opportunities are there, but also just stepping back and being with my family. Because as I've kind of hinted towards earlier, it takes so much coordination and work to fit in a two hour run when you're working an eight hour day and your kids need to be picked up at 3.30 and you can't be late and your husband's out of town and the dogs need to be worked. So it, it, it is a lot. And uh, so I feel like I just want to give my best performance in India, represent our country well. And I feel like that it, it itself is just a huge goal. What would be the advice that you would give to somebody who looks up to what you're doing, is inspired and wants to achieve something similar? Uh, you know what? I would just be so encouraging and saying, you know what? You can do it. You deserve to work on yourself and to, to hit that goal. I think a lot of times, especially as moms, you carry this guilt that, oh, I should be at home with my kids. But you know what, that time away and to be able to pursue your goal makes you 100% a better mom. Um, it's hard to explain because you're more tired and you're probably more crankier at the end of the day, but like just it helps shape you into who you are and just say, go for it, you know, set that bar high and uh, you can you can do it. So just encourage those to just go after their goal. Don't settle for less. You said it. <laughs> <laughs> Gina, thank you so much for joining me on this episode today. It's, it was a great pleasure getting to chat with you and to learn more about the success that you had in your bison career and how it's transferred and carried over to all the things that you do today. Thank you for having me.